Okay, a quickie video on how to fix some of these old Rollison windows. Pretty popular, I guess, back in the day, back probably in the 80s, 70s. They're aluminum windows, double pane, but they're old. They lose their seal, they fog up, make a mess, and they can be kind of expensive to replace, but you can do it yourself and save a lot of money on the cheap. So this is an older rental house I'm doing this to, so I will show you my process. Of course, first of all, you got your little clips here. There's one up there. There's one up there. You pull, pull those out so the balances will catch. Oh, hang on. I got to get two hands on this one. Okay. So with those little clips out, the balances should catch. And once they catch, then you can see once they catch, gets the gets the tension. You see the balances down here hanging below. That one's now hanging below. The tension has been relieved off the balance. So lift up, tilt, tilt out, and take it out. So I just did that with one hand. Easy peasy. So I got that one out. And of course this one's lost its seal also. I've already took out this. This stuff here gets all dry and brittle, falls apart. So you break that out. And it's got a little caulk. I gotta, I gotta dig this caulk out, and I'll get this window pane out. But these are the original glass. So this is like 40 years old, and you notice there is no sealing in here at all. The only thing that creates the seal is that cheap little piece of plastic that just snaps in here. I'll show you an example on this one. This stuff right here. That's all that that holds the glass into the frame. Cause see, you can you can push on it. And, it, and it's, it'll open up. There's really no seal between that and the aluminum. But I'm going to do it a little bit differently when I put this back together. But anyway, that's kind of how you get it out. And you can still get balancers for these things. Uh, Swissco, I think is the name of the company. Or balances. I said balancers. Balances. You can still get those individual parts. They have numbers stamped on them based on the weight and the length, the weight of the window. So anyways, I'll, uh, I'll finish cutting this cock out and get this piece out and we'll put it back together with some new glass. Oh, All right. you can see we've, we've got most of this old cock dug out of here, just took a razor blade and put some tape on here just in case it decides to crack on us because that could, could happen. So we've cut the cock out, it's getting close to coming out now. Will it lift up at the bottom? Because it's got to come out from the bottom. Not quite yet. We're getting closer. We've got to do a little more whittling with the razor blade. And you see why, see why we put the tape on it? Because it's already starting to crack on. So at least that's going to hold it together. And we got most of the cock out. Still being a burger. Of course, normally you wouldn't have this caulk in here. Someone else has done, done this in the past. Well, amazingly, we finally got it wiggled out. And we didn't, and there's no blood. So that's a good sign. <laughs> uh, so, and you can see, you know, from the factory, when they built these things, there's no sealant at all. It's just the glass laid up against it. If there was sealant at one time, there's very little. Now, we've got to go in here and clean out all this old caulk really good. Clean this tray out. I'm gonna uh, put me some new. There's a little spacer. You'll see these little spacers. They sit right in here, like, you know, like that. And it keeps the glass from laying on, on the aluminum. So uh, I may have to make a couple more of those. I got some little rubber stuff laying around. So we'll get this cleaned up and uh, get the new piece of glass and get her installed. Okay, here's another tip for you. So we're getting this track cleaned up really good, really dry. Actually, I got a little bit of carburetor cleaner because that's a bit of melting out that little bit of caulk I had down in here. Got me one of these Scotch Brights for a little bit of scrubbing. Uh, it's got that done. You don't want to get too carried away because it'll strip the white right off these things. But one tip is this little valley down here. You want to clean that out because that'll get full of crud. And when it does, your lower window won't close all the way. There's this little metal piece here. Somewhere, yeah. See this piece right here? That part 
to help make the seal has to go down into this little groove. Well, that groove over the years gets full of creeping crud. And so we take your paint stick and get all that out. And so that way the window will close down all the way for you and get a better seal. So we're going to get this cleaned up and get ready to lay a, a bead of a sealant down here and put this glass in. Okay, well, fixing to put that glass in, I needed a, a little rubber pad to go to support the glass and, and about to get everything centered. So I didn't have the original stuff, but this is some just a little rubber foot pad you find on old lawnmowers and different things. I think, you know, ski doos. Uh, it's a very dense rubber peeling stick, so that'll work. Do the same thing. So I got there scrounging around, found that. So that's going to be, I'm going to use that for my spacer. Get that put on, and we'll almost have a window done. Okay, so we always do a dry run first. We've got the glass in there. There's no sealant. I'm just checking my little rubber spacers. Everything looks good. Spacing is good all the way around. So now I'm going to pull the glass out carefully and then um, just put a bead of sealant in there and put it back together. All right, here we go. So there's the, the bead of sealant. I have to focus. We'll focus over here better. There you go. AC. And that's clear. What is this stuff called? It's clear silicone we're using. GE clear silicone. Good stuff. So, so it's going to take both hands to put this in. So we'll get that done. Then we'll show you what it looks like afterward. Okay. Danger, danger. And don't do what I'm doing because I'm not wearing gloves. That's not smart at all. frame that's all you got to do now next thing you don't want to go slamming doors or opening doors real hard you could create a vacuum and suck the glass right back out of the frame so give you that little time to to adhere so that should be just fine now we just got to do the lower piece easy peasy well, I got in a hurry. I forgot to show you this part. To get this little piece of plastic out, they, they just snap in. They just snap in place. So a, a little putty knife is all it takes. Take a putty knife, push in. These little things just pop out of the way. And you see how brittle they are. They're cooked in the sun, so I don't worry about putting them back in. I just uh, let my silicone do, do its job of holding it. I've been doing this for years. The silicone holds, holds great. So I'm going here and same way, clean up all this cock and uh, lay a piece of glass in, into this piece and uh, we'll, we'll have this to put in and this job will be almost done and as you can see putty knife does quick work to clean that surface up real good getting rid of that old, old caulk out of there Does real easy. You can get some nice long strings like that. So get that cleaned up, get a bead of caulk, and we'll you can see my new piece of glass is already laying down here below ready to go in. You know, I earlier I mentioned I didn't think there was any caulk on these things, but evidently surely from the factory they put some, but evident it's probably just put so, so little amount and the fact it's 40 years old, it just all dried up and lost its seal and really wasn't having any effect as far as uh, holding the glass in, in place. So I uh, thought I'd mention that, and I'm fixing to lay me another bead of silicone, and we'll lay that glass in there and let it cure and stick it back in, in the house. Well, I just noticed something, and it's probably something to be aware of. And I'm, I'm assuming this is a like a little weep hole, a drain hole, because, you know, this glass, there, it's bad to sweat, especially if you're in a humid area, and it's wintertime, the, this... Uh, these aluminum windows will sweat so I'm a, my assumption is that little hole there get my big finger out of the way is where the moisture can drip down through that hole and then it will work its way outside that would be my thought process if I'm correct I don't know for sure but just keeping that in mind that you don't 
don't block that or cover it up with one of these little bumpers. So just thought I would point that out. Seeing I'm not a professional. <laughs> so also uh, keep in mind, um, dealing with this stuff. Of course, you notice I'm not wearing gloves. I ain't got enough sense, I guess. I, sh I should be wearing gloves, long sleeve shirt, and all that kind of stuff when you're dealing with plate glass. But um, that was my choice, and that's probably not a good one. But you should do better than me. All right, we are live. All right, here we go. Putting the glass back in. We've got a bit of caulk in there already. Let me try to get under this. This way. Right. Got a little space on both sides. Push it down to my bumpers. All right, I think we're in good shape. A little bit of pressure. Let that dry a little bit. We'll put it back in the house. Easy. Okay. While I'm at it, I'm going to tell you about some of these parts I keep because I got a lot of these windows and a lot of different rentals. And there's a place called Swissco that has all these little spare parts. One thing I've noticed for my application anyways, when, see I need a, a balance like this is the common balance that I need. But I can't seem to get them like the originals that had the, the wide piece up here to keep it centered. So I have to buy them separately. They're right here. So I have to buy these and, and put them on to make them identical to the original ones. But they got all kinds of spare parts. That's the little part to the top of the window. And there's these little clips. They're always out and gone. It seems like there's a special tool for when you replace those roll pins. You thread it back over with that tool because you have to knock out that pin, put in the new plastic piece and then use that tool to set it back out. I'm trying to find the original one. Yeah. So here's my original, old original. It's got that, got that wide tail piece on it. But anyway, you can get all these parts and you see I keep keep a lot of spares. So when a spring breaks, I can easily go, go to a rental, replace it and get the window working again. So there are options if you got these old windows, want to keep them working. You can keep on working. I just wanted to point out to you that website I use to get those parts, Swissco.com. They have all those balances that you need for um, all sorts of windows. But in particular, what I'm dealing with is these um, Wallyson. Thanks. Yeah. I guess that's I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Wallyson's what I've been saying. It may be wrong. Anyway, anyway, any parts you need for that, they have a lot of them. All right, well, I'm almost finished, but I keep coming up with different little bits of information I want to share. Another thing on these windows, you want to make sure this little spot down here is cleaned out. You'll get bugs and acorn nuts, whatever, depends on your area, will get wedged in here, and then the window will not close all the way. So we'll get you a stick or something to make sure all that's cleaned out and all that. Like I showed before, you definitely want to make sure this is clean because that'll prevent the window from going all the way down. There's something else problematic with these windows is because of the, the balances you know they're always trying to lift lift up you know, because they are they're, they're spring loaded so you take it down okay and they they want to jump back up just a little bit so you may push it down and you'll notice they spring back up well as they spring back up now you're letting cold air in you know just like how you got that little gap at the top you want to make sure that's tight now with this window, we've already added this type of lock. This didn't come that way. But with this, you can rotate it. And now that pushes the window down good and tight. You see the locks are, are floppy loose. The window is all the way down. And it's sealing good against the, the top seal and the bottom seal. There's another option. If you don't have this type of lock installed, you can always just get you a stick uh, let me see here. Imagine this with a stick. You can just take it and wedge it in here, and that will push this down all the way tight. And that'll help keep those cold drafts out of these old aluminum windows. Because uh, 
they are problematic. I'm trying to keep out the cold air with these aluminum things. They just transfer, because they are aluminum, they just transfer the cold right on through. You'll see them frost up in real cold, cold weather. But anyway, I'm fixing to put this uh, last piece in there and this will be done. All right, so now you can see the finished product. So for less than 40 bucks, I just did it myself. No more fogged up windows, nice and clear. And like I mentioned before, I don't fool with putting this plastic crest back in there because it's all brittle. I just put a good good bead of silicone in there and everything looks really nice and clean. So maybe that'll help you out. And when your window fogs up on you, your old aluminum windows, I'll give you a little idea of how you can fix yours yourself and save yourself some monies. Thanks for watching and have a great day.